name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome all of us to this service and pray that as we seek his face, he will be mighty in our lives this day in Jesus' name. The Lord be with you. Let us worship God. make your requests known to God in prayer and petition with thanksgiving through Jesus let us continually offer up to God the sacrifice of praise that is the tribe tribute of lips which acknowledge his name beloved in Christ as we approach our holy God we realize that we have seen and come short of his glory let us therefore humbly confess our sins to him, kneeling and saying together, O God, our righteous judge, our merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We acknowledge that we are responsible for our sinfulness. Have mercy upon us, we pray you. And forgive us by the love which you have shown to us all in Jesus Christ, who for our sakes died and rose again. Give us true repentance by the power of your Holy Spirit, and enable us to forsake our evil ways and serve you in newness of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord. Grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Recognizing that God has forgiven us because Jesus, the Lamb of God, has died for us. Let us adore him, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. You have dealt well with your servants, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord. Your word is a lamp to our feet. Psalm. The appointed psalm for this service 
is Psalm 31. Verses 1 to 8 shall be taken responsorially. Psalm 31. To you, Lord, have I come for shelter. Let me never be put to shame. Be for me a rock of refuge, a fortress to defend me. For you are my high rock and my stronghold. Into your hands I commit my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, God of truth. I will rejoice and be glad in your loving kindness, for you have looked on my distress and know me in adversity. First lesson is taken from the book of Prophet Ezekiel, chapter 11. I commence the reading from verse 14. Ezekiel, chapter 11, beginning to read from verse 14. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel, woolly, are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from the Lord, unto us is this land given in possession. Therefore see, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far of among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, thus yet the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people, and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come, thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of thy flesh, and I will give them an heart of flesh that they may walk in my status and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings, and the wheels beside them, and the glory of God of Israel was over them above. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city, and stood upon the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. Afterwards, the Spirit took me home 
and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea, to them of the captivity. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. Then I speak unto them of the captivity, all the things that the Lord has showed me. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 16. We begin to read from verse 21. John 16, from verse 21. A woman which is in labor has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remember the anguish for joy that a woman being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. This is the word of the Lord. bow down your heads as we pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for the grace to see the last Sunday in the month of October. It is the time, O oh Lord, to hear from you. We pray that you speak to us. Then let your merciful ears be opened unto our petitions. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated. We give God Almighty the glory 
for making every one of us to be among the living. We pray that the joy of this day will be permanent in our lives in the name of Jesus. In the same vein, I want to appreciate my father and mentor, the Dao Caesar, for this rare privilege to be here and stand before you, children of God, and communicate the mind of God. My Lord, it is my prayer that the grace of God will never cease upon your life in Jesus' name. Brethren in Christ, today is a wonderful day and with a very wonderful theme that we will be considering. Heaven's unending joy. Heaven's unending joy. Please turn your Bible with me to John chapter 16, verses 21 and 22. A woman, when she is in tra travail, adds sorrow, because her hour is come. For as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the hangish, for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you. I say to you, your heart will rejoice in the name of Jesus. Brethren in Christ, the word unending is an adjectival word describing something that is continuous or ongoing. It means something that has no end or limit. It continues indefinitely without stopping or concluding. Well, in a layman language, we can say it has no expiry date. So it suggests a sense of perpetuity or endlessness. Why unending joy means that it is a joy that is lasting, a joy that is persistent and not limited by time, or circumstances. It is a kind of joy that doesn't fade, enduring through challenges or changes. Heaven's unending joy evokes a sense of eternal peace, happiness, and fulfillment beyond the earthly realm. It speaks to the vision of a place where sorrows vanish, time is boundless, and joy never fades. Imagine a place where love is perfect, peace flows endlessly, and joy is boundless. A place where God himself dwells with his people. It is a joy rooted in God himself, who is love, peace, and joy. In heaven, God's presence is the source of our joy. No wonder the psalmist declares in Psalm 16 verse 11, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. People of God, in our main text for this meditation, which is the second lesson for this service, John chapter 16, verse 21 to 24, Jesus Christ our Lord speaks to his disciples on the eve of his crucifixion, preparing them for the grief they will experience but also pointing them toward the profound joy that we follow. Jesus Christ uses the powerful metaphor of childbirth to help his disciples understand the transformation of sorrow into joy. A woman in labor experiences intense pain, but once a child is born, a joy overwhelms a memory of the suffering. For weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I pray for you. I don't know what, what type of suffering you are going through, or you are even in pain, either in the secret or in the public. This morning I say and declare concerning that suffering, and has come to them in the name of Jesus. Why? Because it is your season of unending joy. This joy is not a fleeting or earthly feeling, but an unbreakable, heavenly joy. 
a joy he says no one will take away. Like child baths, our earthly pains and struggles are in purposeless. That is, sorrow at times has a purpose. They are part of a journey that ultimately leads to an eternal joy. Because we trust God, we transform our sorrow into something beautiful and everlasting. So, just as the pain of childbirth gives way to the birth of new life, our earthly trials lead to a joy that far surpasses them. As Jesus pointed out in this passage, John chapter 16, verse 21 to 24, this unending joy of heaven has significant benefit for we believers in both this life and the eternal life to come. Number one, we will have endurance and hope through trials of life. Jesus compares this disciple's grief to the pain of a woman in labor, which is ultimately transformed into joy. When the child is born, similarly, the promise of heaven's joy allows us to endure hardship with hope, knowing that our current pain is temporary and will be replaced with joy. I say that the pain you are going through from now will be replaced with joy in the name of Jesus. We will have a joy no one can take away. John chapter 16 verse 22 b Security in God's promise and freedom from fear and loss will be ours. Number three, we will have complete fulfillment in God. Jesus speaks of a joy that will be complete. John chapter 16 verse 24. Meaning that it will be whole, perfect, and lacking nothing. I pray for you, you will not lack anything good in Jesus' name. Your life will not lack anything good in the name of Jesus. Your destiny will not lack anything good in the name of Jesus. Complete joy means that we will experience true rest. This season, true rest will be yours in Jesus' name. Number four, confidence in prayer and relationship with God is assured. John chapter 16 verse 24. Our prayer will now become a source of joy, a source of comfort and strength as we communicate with God. Somebody is hearing me, you have been laboring in prayer and there is nothing to show for it. Because you are hearing the sound of my voice, this season, your prayers are answered in the name of Jesus. You will not labor in vain again in Jesus' name. Number five, you will be living as a reflection of heaven's joy. That is, the joy you will be carrying is rooted in the promise of heaven. And number six, you will never be put to shame. Psalm 31, verse 1. And number seven, you will walk in liberty. Psalm 31, verse 8. People of God, you will agree with me that our world is filled with challenges. It is filled with pain and loss, which can make heaven seem a distance. Yet, God calls us to lift our eyes to this eternal hope. I tell you this morning, Heaven is not an abstract dream. It is a promise from our Creator, a home prepared for each of us. As believers in Christ, we are all invited to partake in heaven's unending joy, a joy rooted in our relationship with God and with which begins in our lives here and now. How then can we actively experience this heaven's unending joy. Number one, you must receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The first step in partaking in heaven's unending joy is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I tell you, your position or status in the church, in the society, in your family, or in the business world has nothing to do with this. You must accept Jesus as your Lord if you must experience this joy unending. John chapter 3, verse 16. Number two, abiding in Christ daily, you must be living very close to Jesus. Joy flows from our intimacy with God. 
No wonder a song says, Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. I will praise your name. I will worship you. Glory, hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord. John chapter 15 verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Brethren in Christ, you must abide in Christ to experience unending joy. Number three, living with an eternal perspective. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 encourages us to set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. Focusing on God's promises help us keep our joy alive. Number four, you must walk and continue walking in God's love and obedience. Brethren, I tell you this morning, obedience brings joy. I say again, obedience brings joy. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 10 to 11, that if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Jesus, as I have kept my father's command, just as I have kept my father's command and remain in his love, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that our joy may be complete. This season, your joy will be full in the name of Jesus. Heaven is a place of perfect love and we are called to reflect that, that love, that love here on heart. Even our Darcisa memory verse 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, re echo this. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Brethren in Christ, loving others, serving and forgiving brings joy to us. Number five, rejoicing in suffering and trusting in God's faithfulness. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. And number six, sharing the hope of heaven with others. We must be committed to sharing the goodness of Christ to the world. I ask you, when last did you share the hope of heaven with others? Do you even have a character that can invite people to Christ? Brethren in Christ, as I conclude this sermon this morning, Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 14 to 25, our first lesson emphasized that God's plan for us are filled with hope and joy. So the joy of heaven is not only our future inheritance. It is a present gift meant to fill and strengthen us. As we journey through this life, let us all embrace and reflect this joy each day of our life, drawing closer to God and to the promise of heaven's unending joy. Please bow down your heads and let us pray. Our most righteous Father, we thank you for the promise of unending joy. Please help us to live in the light of eternity. Knowing our future is secure, this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. <laughs> Affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostle Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to join the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sin, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please kneel and let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord's prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive the whole sins against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. Endure your ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within all. The collect for the 22nd Sunday after Trinity and other collects. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let your merciful ears, Lord God, be open to the prayers of your people and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as we please you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all our sorts of our enemies, that we surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has simply brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings will be ordered by your governor to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. In continuation of our prayers, we shall pray for our nation Nigeria, the church universal, and other prayers. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness over our nation, Nigeria. Thank you for your law that is from generation to generation. Lord, we pray that you continue to be our God. We ask you that you show your acts and power even to our nation. Pull down every altar of wickedness and darkness in our nation. Be a refuge Save us in the time of hardship and affliction, that we may rejoice again in our country. Use Bola, our president, and Dako, our governor, to be a source of good things in our nation, Nigeria. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord, our Father, in whom our faith stands, thank you for your church. Thank you for what you have been doing in our nation and in the church. We ask you, O God, that you continue to be a shepherd. Let your spirit be more evident upon Henry, a primate, Ulushina, our archbishop, and Baba Tunde, our bishop, be their strength. Use them as a source of light 
even in our nation Nigeria and even in the church of God we ask you oh God that darkness will never rule us even in the church we ask that your glory will cover us more and more in the church of God in Jesus mighty name we have prayed father as we go this week we ask you oh God that you lead us even in the same with your mighty power in the name of Jesus as this month and this week is going to an end that will lead us into the new month we ask you and we rely on you you are our hope may you continue to increase your joy in our life give grace to us that we are going to serve you more and more give us grace to sing a new song this new week in the name of Jesus let our trouble and our pain disappear let the new month open to us a new page of joy in our family in our places of work and in every areas of our life in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you eternal father in jesus mighty name we have prayed commit your way to the hand of god as we go this new way pray to god that the Lord will increase your joy. The Bible says when a woman is in travail, he has sorrow because her hour has come. Can you pray to God that this new week and as we go into this new month, every travail will disappear and joy will be your portion. Is there any area that you have been having pain all this while? This week is your week. The new month is your month. Joy will be your portion. For the Bible says, joy comes in the morning. Bring your prayers to a close. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, you have given us grace to bring before you with one accord a common supplication. And you promise that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servant, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come, the fullness of eternal life. Let us say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>
your labors will not be in vain. Answers to your prayer shall be a fulfillment this week in the name of Jesus. Talk to God about this week. Give me joy in my heart. Keep me praising. Give me peace in my heart. Keep me loving. Give me love in my heart. Keep me serving. You will sing a new song and the whole heart shall rejoice with you. The peace of God with passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Let's rise and take our memory verse. First John chapter 4 verse 20. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? By love, by love, and by love, may the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Have a victorious week.